Okay, so what we've established so far is that is that regional centres, the right regional centres, not just any regional, not not tiny country town, the right regional centres have a tendency to outperform the capitals on an average basis. Again, we're not generalising it here. And what we're seeing is that more and more people are trying to move to these these regional centres because they're typically more affordable and they can have a different uh, can have a different and ostensibly better lifestyle, which is in turn dropping the vacancy rates, uh, making a much tighter market, all of that kind of stuff, which actually is in turn driving the prices up, and that's what we're seeing as well. Yeah. So how can how can like what's what are the other factors that are playing into this because it's not just go and buy a cheap house somewhere it's not just affordability because you can find a cheap house in a country town somewhere and go it's affordable and somebody would like that lifestyle so what are the other factors that are driving um the market at the moment because i know that it was there was there's a lot of new government spending on infrastructure and things like that so how can we start to think about where we're most likely to see the the benefits of, of this kind of stuff yeah, well, um, yeah, firstly, the big trend, exodus to affordable lifestyle. There's two important words there, affordable and lifestyle. So they're not just moving somewhere cheap, they're moving somewhere um, affordable that also offers the lifestyle they want, which includes good infrastructure, good medical services, etc. So we're talking about Ballarat, Bendigo, Orange, Newcastle, the Sunshine Coast, um, substantial regional centres that offer a lot in terms of amenity, infrastructure and lifestyle, at an affordable price compared to the big cities. So that's the big trend that's driving a lot of markets around the country. The one that's coming, and it's going to be huge, is the infrastructure one. Mm. Um, and it's very clear that federal and state governments intend that Australia is going to have an infrastructure-led economic recovery, that they're bringing forward everything they can, anything that's close to shovel-ready um, is being fast-tracked and all governments have shown a willingness to go into debt, to borrow money to do it, short term at least. And so we're going to have more infrastructure spending, more big projects happening around Australia probably than ever before. And that's significant for residential property because we believe that nothing pumps up residential property markets more than that factor. Infrastructure spending big time creates economic activity, it generates jobs, from that comes demand for real estate, but it also improves the amenity of a place. If you build a new rail link to somewhere, it becomes more desirable. So there's lots of impacts for residential property, um, and we're going to start to be feeling those impacts uh, from this point forward, certainly right throughout next year and beyond. So putting all those things together, that's why I'm very confident in predicting uh, a national property boom in Australia. I think it's already underway, in fact, well, in most places.